What's up everyone, my name is Lex Veltuis and welcome to a brand new episode of Learn with Lex. We're going to jump straight into a big 330 tournament on Pokestars. This is going to be a regular tournament, not speedy, no bounties, nothing, and we're just going to go over every single decision that I have. And off we go. Uh, one thing that I've added uh, is I added a timer in the top left right above me. Uh, you can see how long the tournament has been playing for. I think uh, this also shows you a little bit sometimes how uh, long passes without decisions. I think this is really important so you guys can learn some patience as well. Uh, I would have played this hand, I uh, would have definitely raised it. Uh, maybe against the min raise I would have played it, but somebody opening two and a half times the big blind means that we're going to play a little bit tighter as well. It's really important to have different decisions uh, against different raise sizes. If somebody makes it the minimum, you can go along with a lot more hands in this situation, for instance, than when somebody makes it two and a half times the big blind, or sometimes people even make it three or four times the big blind. So you really want to tighten up the bigger the size goes. All right, over here we have pocket tens. We are 50 big blinds deep, so that's rather deep. Uh, that means that we're gonna make it a little bit more than min raise. You see that I have uh, those sizes in my bed slider. Uh, the deeper you are, the bigger you wanna go. Uh, usually with a maximum of about two and a half times the big blind, which is absolutely fine. We don't uh, really ever start raising three times the big blind, but it's important uh, to know. That's a great start. So we flop a set of tens. Now, what is very interesting here is that a lot of people, the stronger hand they have, they immediately revert to slow playing. The problem with slow playing here is that uh, we still have 50 big blinds behind and the pot is only 6 big blinds. I need to get some money. We can also play around with smaller continuation bets. Uh, this way we still keep hands with spades. <laughs> Focus us pro, right? This way we kill, still keep hands with spades in um, and uh, some hands with a single club in their hand that might want to go for future flushes. Now, we make four of a kind. Again, if we check here, we lose uh, the ability to go for all the chips. We don't have to go big, but I, I still would heavily uh, advise betting. The ultimate goal in poker is with your good hands to win all the chips that you can, to double your stack or to win your whole opponent's stack. You don't get there by checking to the river. Obviously, there are situations, but there are exceptions. And now, we're just gonna continue betting. And here you see the power six big blinds on the flop. Uh, we flopped top set and won a 50 big blind pot and our opponent, uh, our opponent had sixes. So by betting top set, betting quads, betting quads when the flush hits there, we still got action on all streets from sixes. Uh, this just goes to show that you can still um, uh, build really big pots by betting your hands. The thing is though, don't just start blasting 80% on the pot, right? We can also start with some smaller bets. All right, so a few hands have passed. Uh, we have ace-jack, offsuit. I'm just gonna call this. Ace-jack, uh, ace-jack offsuit is a pretty good hand on the button to call. The more we're earlier in the table, in an earlier seat, the more I would re-raise with this hand because it doesn't play well when a whole lot of people behind you come in. Don't really have anything going for us. I think what's really important is we have cards in our hand that we would love our opponents to have. When people talk about blockers, what they talk about is what you block that your opponent can have. So the fact that I have an ace of hearts means that they don't have ace nine of hearts, ace 10 of hearts. The fact that I have a jack means they don't have queen jack of clubs, jack 10 of clubs, all hands that are possible raises from there. So the problem is if I have these hands, they can't have them. And that's what I mean with blockers. And when I say that this is a bad hand for us to have, on a board like King for Deuce of Spades, if we want to bluff, the hands that we want to get folds from are exactly Ace Ten of Hearts, Ace Queen of Hearts, Ace Ten of Hearts, or Jack Ten of Clubs. Those are exactly the hands that we want to fold. So having these cards uh, actually just means that it's not a good time to bluff. And that's something that might seem pretty advanced, but once you get a little bit used to that, uh, it gets easier and easier. I'm just gonna check this down, and we lose, and it's fine. All right, so now we have a banger. We have ace, uh, king. Uh, somebody opens. Generally, when you re-raise before the flop, which uh, you know is often referred to as three betting, but when you re-raise before the flop, you want to make it three times the raise of the person in front of you, especially when you have stacks that are between 25 and 50 big blinds. When you have less than that, you can make it a bit smaller. When you have more than that, you can make it a bit bigger. But when you're in position on somebody, meaning you have last say after the flop, you can make it three times their raise. 
great flop. Uh, don't just go into half pot betting mode. Uh, make sure that you have some small bet sizings and a bet slider that you can create in the settings. Uh, this is a super dry board. We want to bet this board a lot. Um, we're going to get a lot of folds on this board as well. Like let's say we have ace jack. We can make a ton of hands fold even with a small bet. Uh, so I'm just going to start out with a small bet. They just jam. We insta call. Not a care in the world. Ace jack. No outs. Dead. Um, I think this is definitely a very underappreciated uh, area of small betting. When you bet small, you're going to get a ton of folds from hands that really shouldn't be folding, hands that are too strong to fold. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's like a red on uh, a, like a red flag on a bull, and people will just jam like that. Like he had no equity, no outs, just puts in 40 big blinds, absolutely stone dead. Over here we have a6, so first of all we're going to check how many big stacks are there. Everybody's relatively big, so we're going to make it a little bit more than the, the min raise or the 2.05 that we do. Uh, this is always one of the first things that you check when you scan the table. Uh, a6 suited is an open from any position when it's up to you first, uh, so we don't really have to think about that. The only suited ace, and this might be a good thing for you guys to remember, the only suited ace that you fold is ace deuce suited when you're under the gun. All the other aces are plays, and again, that is with the disclaimer, uh, if it's not open before you yet, because obviously when there's already somebody in the pot or somebody raising, that changes massively. I'm going to make a small bet. Uh, this is a pretty good board for the big blind, especially. They're going to have most of the like 5, 4, 7, 6 kind of hands, um, but we have some equity, and we can just assume that they have it. The more people in the pot, the funny thing is, the smaller you can bet. A lot of people think there's a lot of people in the pot, I need to get my competition out, but this person calling will really scare away these two a lot. So you can make it smaller. Um, these bets are very effective. It's also just way too expensive if you just have to blast like six or seven here with every bluff. So your bluffs stay cheap. And when you have your good hands, it's also easier to get paid because it's very scary if you just fire off eight big blinds into three uh, other players. So you have to be very aware of the perception of what you bet and what you do is to the other players. Okay, so we opened uh, King-Queen here. Um, again, 2.2 times the big blind. We got called by the button and the small blind. Um, great board for us. Again, um, what we want to do here, when we're with multiple people, we can actually bet small. A lot of times people think the more people, the bigger you have to bet to weed out your competition. But that's false. It works a lot better for bluffs because uh, people are scared anyway when you're with five people in the hand. People are going to assume, oh, somebody else will have a king. You hear that all the time. Uh, coincidentally, also, when you try to value bet uh, with your uh, strong hands, you get more action when you bet small multiway. Um, it's also easier to build big pots because if both people call the pots, the pot already grows uh, a lot more than if you were to be 1v1. So... Keep in mind that with more people in the pot, you can still bet small. Don't just start firing off because you want to get rid of hands. Because all you do is get rid of the really weak hands and you keep the really strong hands in. So you're going to end up in the same really messed up position. Over here we have pocket jacks. We're going to make it three times the raise, which is what we do when we re-raise. I just want to note that this is not why it's called a three bet. A three bet is because this is the third bet. You have the big blind, which is the blind bet. The raise is the, is the two bet. The second bet, this is the third bet, and that's why they call it a three bet. Take it down, we would have obviously uh, gone to war on that hand, hand is good enough. All right, so we're gonna raise ace five suited. We raise any a any suited ace on any position if it's not open before us, very easy. So we're still relatively deep. So I'm just gonna make it 2.2. We hit a five, I'm gonna bet small for some protection. Again, we don't have to bet big when we're with multiple people. A bet like two and a half will get rid of more hands than you could count because if this person have a hand, has a hand uh, like ace jack, he might, you know, ace jack, king, queen. Normally they could come along and you want those hands out, but now they have two people behind them and they think, I don't wanna play with so many people. Um, I'm not gonna fold, they could have spade draws, they could be bluffing. Um, I also have five outs to improve. That's obviously the best card to improve on. We're gonna check again though. And that's gonna be a very easy call. They did have spades and they make a straight. So this really goes to show as well that people will have flush draws there and um, you know that it's not always gonna be uh, an insanely strong hand. All right, so we're really short here now. 
We have 11 big blinds if somebody makes it the minimum. We have to call one big blind for a pot of four. These are the positions where people play the weakest hands, so we're definitely gonna call along. Might seem very counterintuitive. So, um, I think it's getting a little bit too dicey though. They should also not be super comfortable with this board. I'm just gonna throw this one away for now and let him have it. So now we're really entering the short stack uh, realm and it's gonna be very important. It's gonna be very important for us to adjust accordingly. Playing too tight as a short stack really means that you're just gonna bleed out most of the time. If I, if I were to bust, I'm just gonna keep finding uh, some tournaments for us to play. Uh, tournaments with a similar um, similar structure. So, you know, regular tournaments, no bounties, no turbos. Just a regular tournament. It's not as much about uh, doing a tournament from start to finish, even though we will sometimes. I just wanna show you guys as many uh, different situations as possible in certain game types. One of the things that's really important in these situations is not look at your stack and think, oh, you almost have nothing left. Oh, I'm pretty much out. That was my tournament. I don't have a shot anymore. Uh, these are really toxic thoughts. And just because you had a big stack earlier and you lost uh, a, a decent chunk doesn't mean that you're out. You still have to play disciplined. Um, you still have to go in with good hands. Like queen five suited is just not an all in here for seven big blinds. And I should just not do it. You just have to adjust to a new situation and you can still win the tournament with a stack like this but not if you throw it away uh, playing some wonky hands. Obviously, six and a half big blinds are gonna be good enough with an ace, so we're gonna get those in. Also gonna get the blinds soon. The blinds are gonna be up when we get them, so once the blinds pass, we'll only have three big blinds left or so. So this is a really good time to go. Even get it in ahead, that's great. Two cards under seven, that means that chopping is not gonna happen as much. That's pretty unlucky. <laughs> it's so funny when you when you record one of these videos just for teaching purposes and the guy rivers <laughs> fucking straight and somebody chops this one, you're still like, God damn it. Uh, it's all good. So we still win some chips. So we're up to 7.7 .7 big blinds now. Okay, so now we are short stack, but we stay patient and we have uh, King Queen here. Obviously a hand that we're going to go for. Uh, if somebody raises on us, we're going to go all in. Uh, there's a few situations where we might fold this hand uh, if there's like a raise and two all ins or something. Um, but something very specific would have to happen. If this person goes all in, I think I'm, I think I'm still going to go all in. Uh, even though, of course, that's going to be a little bit strong. Going to be a little bit afraid of ace, king, ace, queen. But the nice thing is this two and a half big blind dead money that's in there. Very juicy. All right, we're just going to go all in with our hand. Going to have a better hand on average. There we go. Okay, that's great. So we double up. Stay patient, 17 big blinds, that's a, 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 a real stack again. Uh, there's a lot more space you can have with 17 big blinds than people think. Blinds are up though, just to bait us, back down to 12 big blinds. <laughs> okay, so we have ace nine, we only have 12 big blinds. We're gonna go all in over a raise. Uh, this person's gonna raise all kinds of hands. That's obviously pretty bad. That's not something we wanna see. They have a better ace, that's just unlucky that somebody wakes up with a better ace behind us. And that's all she wrote. So over here, we busted the big $3. I'm just gonna get another tournament with regular speed, no bells and whistles in. A6 is definitely fold. Wanna be really careful with uh, Aces offsuit with bad kickers. Uh, Ace5 is already a lot better than A6 because with Ace5, you can actually make two card straights, right? When it comes deuce, three, four, you make a straight with Ace5. A6 is just pure shit. So you really only wanna play it from the button. Let's conclude this video with the last hand. We only have to call one. So we get a uh, pot odds of 116 chips to one. Uh, probably should have bet there. I have no clue why I check. It's very important. <laughs> it's very important to protect the value you have in the hand. All right, I'm gonna look like an idiot now. Easy. All right, so that concludes this video. Uh, we're definitely gonna keep playing these. I think uh, that this works quite well. Uh, thank you so much for watching.
Um, when we just register the same sort of tournament format over and over, sometimes we might play a video very long, we might get a, a really big stack, and other times we might have to play three of the same, but that's just the way the poker grind goes. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and as usual, I read every single comment, so let me know what you think of the video series, let me know if you'd like to see some adjustments, and also let me know what you like, because then we can do more of the same. So, see you guys next time, and thank you very much for checking out another episode of Learn With Lex.